Today on Engine Power, we're transforming an anemic four-cylinder into a street-legal autocrosser on steroids with a Ford Racing 5.0 Illuminator V8. Plus, see what's cool from the Matt Coat Tool Expo. Welcome to Engine Power and our newest project. It's not just an engine this time, rather a 92 Mustang that is far from acceptable. It's full of squeaks, creaks, and we consider it a road heap, which makes it perfect for our plans as a barely legal Mustang. Under the hood is a 2.3 liter four cylinder that produces 105 horsepower and 135 foot pounds of torque. The interior is faded, and if you could only scratch and sniff your TV screen, you'd agree on the rotten smell. Now the exterior is needing some attention too. The paint is rough, headlights are on their last flash, and the bumper cover needs some attention. After all that, there was some attempt to be cool. So what are the plans for our Mustang project? How about a Ford Racing Illuminator crate engine that cranks out 412 horsepower? Now we're gonna dyno this thing in just a few. It's also getting a complete suspension and fuel system from front to back to make this thing a competition ready corner carver. Now to get started, we have to do a complete teardown by removing all the larger components. Now raise the car to drain the fluids. Now make sure you dispose of them properly. Most auto parts stores take it free of charge. Back on top, disconnect the wiring harness from the engine and all of its components. Our new engine's throttle is a drive-by wire type, so this factory cable can go as well. Brakes are another upgrade we are doing, so this entire system is going away. Now before we start loosening lines, I like to drain all the fluid at each corner of the car so we don't have lines dripping, making a large mess. That's not good. The drive shaft is next, but the rust beat us to it, and it's not worth the fight. Good thing we didn't have to. Now we can loosen the cross member bolts, but leave them in for now. Remove the bolt from the steering shaft, cut the exhaust, and disconnect the sway bar from the subframe rail. Back on the ground, run a chain through the spring and control arm so the spring doesn't fly out. With the strut loose, we can lower the jack and use a bar to remove the spring from the perch. And using a jack to support the K-member, remove the bolts attaching it to the frame rails. Then pull out the two cross-member bolts we loosened earlier, and raising the car slowly, we'll separate the drivetrain from the car, taking the time to make sure everything is free. Doing it this way saves a lot of time and minimal cleanup from fluids. So it's out with the old and making way for the new, with four times the horsepower and 287 more foot-pounds of torque. Out back, the shocks can be loosened so we can remove the rear springs. Now there's not much tension on them, so a chain is not needed. With the car up high, I'll loosen the four bolts that hold the control arms to the frame. Now lower the car to the axle stand and remove the bolts to free it up. Raising the car, we'll leave the rear end in place and it can go away. So far, we cleared out the bottom of the car with three simple things, the lift, a jack, and two stands. We still have a ways to go, like removing the factory gas tank, cleaning up the engine bay, and most important, getting rid of all this nasty scale. Now that may take a while, if we do it ourselves. We're sending it out to be blasted. The brake lines can stay, but the bracket can go. You must bring a clean slate to remove all the rust and old undercoating. Same goes for the engine bay. Everything left is trash plus the illuminator will eat up every inch of space in it. And with a little ingenuity, it's ready to go. As far as the body and paint, I'm really not sure. We can always dress it up later. Performance is our number one priority right now. So we brought it to some old friends of ours. They're so good, they need two signs on their door. Blast from the past in Lebanon, Tennessee. A few hours here saves us a few days of grinding by hand. Now this allows us to see any cracks or weaknesses that may be hiding under all that dirt and rust and gives a suitable surface to weld to. You never know what you got till the dust settles. We'll be right back. 
Coming up, behind the scenes at this year's Matco Tool Fair, and later we verify the numbers on Ford's new Illuminator. Ever since I was a little kid, I couldn't stay out of my dad's toolbox. Now, if they didn't go back in the right place, he was sure to let me know. Now, recently, we sent our cameras to an event where the talk was nothing but tools. Hollywood? Sure felt like it. But the stars of this show were celebrities in their own right. Top performers and their families in the world's fastest growing automotive tool franchise. The place was South Central Texas and the colorful city of San Antonio, the backdrop for this year's Matco Tool Expo and Business Conference. This is the biggest event of the year for Matco Tools. It's like the biggest sales meeting under one roof for us as a company. It's a time when our franchisees get together, they see old faces that they talk to during the year. We're the Ryans from Gill, Colorado. Luke Benson from Big Lake, Minnesota. Ron and Jordan Patterson from Memphis, Tennessee. At the heart of MACO are the men and women franchise owners, representing 50 states, Canada, and Puerto Rico. Over 1,500 of them and still growing. They're here at the expo for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a big time pat on the back for the top 200 distributors. The guys who run their routes in mobile stores and sell to shop owners, mechanics, and body men, all looking for the right tool that will save them time and make more money. Nobody did that better the last two years than Jeff and Pam Peters of Atkins, Texas, making them the number one Matco distributor. Well, my business is doing pretty good. Uh, started in November. For Josh Curry, those sales figures can be intimidating. Just been trucking along, trying to develop relationships, trying to shake hands and, and get to meet people and try to build that relationship toward, to be that number one tool provider. The best piece of advice I've gotten so far is show up, shake everybody's hands. The next thing, greet, sell, collect. That's it, it's simple, simple as that. Some of what Josh will be selling are groundbreaking tools debuted at the Expo's Power Corral. Like the world's most powerful half-inch impact, with never before seen torque, speed, and durability. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show tightening up a, a bolt to 1,300 foot-pounds, and we're gonna put the new MT2769, and it's gonna zip it off really quick. That demonstrates breakaway torque. How about a new line of dual offset combo wrenches? Who'd have thought such a simple tool could be so dramatically improved? With 15 degree index on the box end, 30 degrees on the open. Another exclusive from Matco. Today's cars are more highly engineered. Everything's very difficult to access. This product gives you a different approach angle uh, for the fasteners. You can get that done, remove faster, put in faster. You're gonna make more money as a technician. An area that draws a crowd at Expo is in the tool storage. All boxes are built by U.S. craftsmen at their Jamestown, New York facility. Launching new at Expo this year, first available on the street, is the new JSC 450 and 480 line of carts. It's got three drawers, a nice deep lid for holding all your tools, pry bar storage up the side. It's a perfect cart to start off with. It's a smaller cart, and it comes in at a really aggressive price point. And we use all the same components and the same craftsmen to build these carts as we do all our top-of-the-line toolboxes. Much of what's new on the floor each year is a direct result of feedback from the end user. Shop technicians Aaron Davis interacts with on his route. Suggestions they make go straight back to Matco for improvement. I was specifically excited about our new launch diagnostic scan tools. It did very well for me for the last two years. Everyone's using the iPad, the iPhones, that type of technology now. Everyone's familiar with it. It's so fast, so fast. It's all touch screens. The Maximus 2.0 and the Maxco have all the great features that we've had in the past, plus additional coverage. Now this is our next level, bringing them up to, bringing everybody up to speed with the new Android software in their tools, so it's quicker, faster, still the great coverage. Now we've even added more features to our product, so it's even more efficient and better for our technicians. 
Coming up, besides a shiny white truck full of tools, what goes into being a Matco distributor? We'll find out from some rising stars of the tool trade. You've seen the trucks, you've seen the tools, but what about the guys behind the wheel? These are independent business owners of their own Matco Tools distributorship. They are here in San Antonio, Texas, enjoying a rodeo with one thing in common. They all made the leap to quit working for the man to be their own bosses. The more successful Matco is, means the more successful the distributor is. Antron Brown gets it. This NHRA world champion has represented Matco for over a decade and thinks this is a great opportunity for anyone out there needing a change of pace. They're not just going to say, sign up, here's your tool truck, here's, here's all these tools, go sell them. No, they bring you in, they bring you through a class, they break you down, and they teach you everything that there is to know about the business, and they're at it with you, they're in it together. Like, we're all in this together as a big family. You could say Craig Weiniger was in a dead-end job working as a mortician. Now he dug deep for a new career. I told her, I said, I'm finding a new job tonight. And uh, it all started. Asked her about owning a franchise. She kind of laughed at me. Filled the paperwork out on the online. Uh, a couple days later, got a phone call uh, with Matco. And here we are now. What's happening, Tom? Tim Novak started with Matco 30 years ago. Now he's director of field operations. It doesn't matter whether you're in the automotive industry, whether you come from a professional industry of any kind. This is the one business with no employees that you can put your attention, your hard work and effort into and really determine your future. Being a Maco franchisee takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, and the desire to succeed. Hi, my name is Josh Mello. I'm a Maco Tools distributor and this is my mobile store. Before I became a Maco Tools distributor, I worked as a auto mechanic for six years and I also worked in the optical industry as a lab manager. With my experience in the automotive industry and some sales experience I've had in the past, I thought it would be a good fit for me and my family. We just pulled into a suburban auto service. Aaron Davis's territory is outside of Akron, Ohio, and he, Josh, and Craig will all tell you the same thing. They're not just selling shop equipment, they're fostering relationships. We brought him out to the truck, showed him the features and benefits about the new AC machine compared to his old one. We took his old AC machine in on trade, uh, readjusted his account for the day. We set up the machine in the shop, showed him how to use it, taking the time out of the day to set the machine up, giving him a complete rundown, making him feel comfortable with that machine as part of building that relationship and the trust. And uh, he's very confident in buying it from you. If you can save them time, that's making them money. And if you're making them money by saving them time, you're making yourself money. And that's what it's all about, helping one another out to be successful in life. I think uh, joining MACA would be a good change for somebody that's uh, unhappy or tired of their career because uh, you, get to, uh, you, know, you get to make your own schedule, you get to uh, decide your own destiny. You get out of it what you put in. Uh, I put a lot of effort into my business and it's been good to me so far. You know, I would encourage anybody that's looking to make a change that has an interest in tools to give it a try. Next, we're back on the pony and playing with, well, prepping its new Ford Illuminator power plant. It's time to continue on the Mustang project. Right now, it's on the way back from Blast from the Past, where it had all the heavy road grind and some undercoating removed from the undercarriage. In the meantime, we need to get our new Ford Racing Illuminator crate engine ready for its final resting place. Now, this is the first Illuminator we've had in the shop, and it's based off the original 5.0 Coyote we showed you about four years ago. In 2010, Jesse Kershaw brought us one of the first Coyotes Ford released, and nobody could explain it better. The Pony Wars are definitely on. The Brand X competition has 400 plus horsepower engines, and while we've always done very well in shootouts against them, uh, we really need to have that number, that over 400 horsepower number, and the way to get it was to bring back the 5 liter in a 4 valve configuration. Well, like usual, we couldn't help it. We had to get inside to take a look. The tall tubes are where the spark plugs are located. It's got dual overhead cams with 4 valves per cylinder. And up front, for total control of the cams, there's a phaser for each. 
On the bottom side, the pan gasket also doubles as the windage tray. It's got six bolt mains, a forged crank, forged powdered metal rods, and hyper-eutectic pistons. Now here's something unique for a stock engine. It's got oil squirters for each piston. Certainly Ford Racing is trying to step up with performance packs for handling and increased power. You name it, we want to have the gambit covered, including a, a positive displacement supercharger kit. And four years later, their website shows they have. The Illuminator is designed for high performance applications. Now we've seen several of these engines equipped with twin turbos that put down over a thousand horsepower at the tires and they hold together. And that's all thanks to the upgraded internals. Now you don't hear of aftermarket companies parts and production crate engines very often, but back in 2002, Ford Racing and Manly Performance struck up a relationship where Manly supplied the connecting rod for the 390 horsepower SVT Cobra, and they're still doing it today. With a premium Ford Steel H-Beam connecting rod. Now this thing is rated to handle 750 horsepower, accepts a 22 millimeter pin, and the Boss 302 beefier rod bearing. Now this thing has a 5.933 center to center length, which gives it a 1.62 to 1 rod to stroke ratio. Now they come equipped with ARP 2000 rod bolts for that extra strength. The factory Coyote rod is an I-beam design that is made from a powdered metal center forged material. Now they share the same length and pin size, but not the power rating. The factory Coyote piston is a hyper eutectic design with four valve reliefs. Now it gives the Coyote an 11 to 1 compression ratio. Now the Illuminator is available in either a 9.5 or 11 to 1 compression ratio and it's filled with Mala Forge pistons like this. Now they have a dry phosphate coating to protect it during startup, four valve reliefs just like the stock one, and the rings measure in at 1.5, 1.5 millimeter, and 3 on the oil ring. Their alternator kit is first to go on before it heads to the dyno, which we're doing just because we can. Now the power pack harness, ECM, power distribution box, and fly-by-wire accelerator can go on. Their air intake is designed for the car. This we'll use for the dyno. The stainless steel headers are from American Racing. They've got inch and three-quarter primaries, three-inch collectors, and no restrictions. With a few more hookups, this illuminator fires right up. It's that simple. Ford Performance rates it at 412 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque similar to the Coyote. The benefit from the Illuminator is the abuse it can handle from additional power adders, like a supercharger, turbo, or nitrous, made possible by the stronger internals we showed you earlier. All right, 441 horsepower, 412 foot-pounds of torque. It's already topped its rating, and it ran smooth and consistent throughout the run. Plus, we'll see more power as the rings seed in. Now, nice increase here, 443 horsepower, 416 foot-pounds of torque. One more, still at 6,500. Man, Ford has got this Illuminator figured out. This thing just made 451 horsepower at 6,500 RPM and 421 foot-pounds at about 4,300. Man, that's awesome. Who knows what we'll add to it down the road? Whatever it is, we know it can handle it. For now, we're installing this Illuminator stock, just as it sits. Good thing, because the Mustang is back with a clean place to put it. You'll see that in the weeks to come.